Shall we begin? Yeah, sure. Let's do this. Uh, hi, and welcome to our knitting space. Uh, we are coming to you from the super overhumidified uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. We went from a cool, chill, brisk 12 degrees Celsius through a wonderful warm and sunny weekend for the Canada Day in that early 20s, and now we're 30 plus with uh, humidity. It's lovely. Dawson's it's, not happy. It's like getting drenched in a warm, wet towel every time you go outside. It's gross. Uh, yeah. Heat. It's fine. It's a thing. You're listening to the Northern Knits Podcast. I'm Jocelyn. I'm Diana. And hopefully over the next course of the next hour, I'm not even going to say we're going under an hour. We're never under an hour. We're going to talk to you guys about all the things we love about the fiber arts. Apologies for the extra noise in the background. We've got a fan going because air movement is key right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, given where we record, we have to turn the air conditioning off to record. So we really must like you guys. If you're <laughs> new, welcome to the podcast. We hope you enjoy it. If you're a returning listener, hey, welcome back. I'm glad you guys were able to join us. Diana, I want to show everybody what we're going to cover this week. Today we're going to cover What's in Our Cup, Wooly Workings, So Little Time, Spinning Yarns, Fiber Flubs, Events, and a book review. Oh my god, we have so much work to do. <laughs> Woo! Alright, let's get started with uh, what's in our cup. My cup is empty. I drank it already. What? I mean, you started podcasting and you didn't refill your beverage? Yeah. I it's okay. Know. This way I'm not going to clink on the glass table next to the microphone. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot not for cold beverages. Wait, sentence structure. English. Good. <laughs> Je ne comprends pas anglais. Pretty much. Uh, there's a um, trick that one of my girlfriends told me years ago. She uh, studies a lot in Arab countries, because that's where her degree is focused on Arab studies. So they will drink hot tea in the middle of the day so that their internal body temperature will sort of regulate with the outside temperature, which is also quite hot. Mm. I do that a lot of the time. But today, given the humidity and the thunderstorming, it was definitely a uh, Starbucks stop before I got here kind of day. So I've already had my passion fruit lemonade. Ooh. My fancy with a pump of raspberry. Because raspberry, obviously, had to happen. I am currently drinking yet more raspberry lemonade. I'm actually drinking this so simple raspberry lemonade that uh, the boys bought yesterday while we were at Safeway. I was drinking that. I drank it all. I think I got all of the pulp in the bottle in my glass, so I basically just drank a smoothie. Well, guess that works. Yeah, I was probably low in fiber today anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. But that's, uh, what's in our cup? Ugh. <laughs> We're still rehydrating from Canada Day. Yep. Man. I can't party anymore. It's so sad. You got old! I accept my oldness. I don't. I don't accept my oldness. <laughs> I'm upset at it. <laughs> I think I might have been when I was like 26 or 27. I'm not anymore. I'm just kind of like, no, I'm old. I'm going to bed, guys. I don't, I don't care. I do, I do not care enough to I feel awful. Thought I thought I wouldn't... I, I, I kind of assumed oldness didn't occur till one turned 30. It's not a magical number where it just sort of kicks in and one day you can and one day you can't. <laughs> That's not actually how that works. <laughs> well, in my head, I kind of thought that's how it worked. I thought I'd be fine. And, it's not even and so then, much like, 30, oldness. everything can go downhill. But no, things are going downhill, and I'm only 26. I don't think it's oldness. I just think it's... Your body's finally gone. Okay, we're done doing dumb stuff now. I never You're... even did that much dumb stuff. Now I can't do anything. Yeah, well, you missed your boat, ma'am. What do you want me to tell you? Mm, come back, boat! <laughs> I did my dumb stuff. There's something really nice about waking up in the morning and not being exhausted from the day before. Yeah. Or perhaps dealing with the side effects of too many adult beveraging. I don't miss those side effects. I don't miss feeling, you know, cruddy the next day. I like going to bed at my bedtime. I like getting up at my get-up time. And I like having a good day. Yeah. I forgot to bring you those coffee beans. Duh! You were going to bring me coffee beans? I was! I knew there was something I was forgetting when I left the house today. Oh, well. It's not like I'll never see you again. Never. <laughs> this there is it? be a distance. That's it. I'm done. We're out. <laughs> no more, ma'am. No. Mm, okay. Oh, that's a thing. Shall we talk about what we're working on? Because, again, in 30 degree heat, I'm not wearing anything wool. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm -mm. There, there has been no wearing of the wool. 
Mm-mm. Wooly workings! So, I've been freed from the starting point shawl, mm-hmm. and I have not had the yarn I need to show up yet. So you I haven't have... paid hard enough to the yarn delivery gods? Ugh! Or I'm karmically paying for stepping on a bug or something. I don't know, but it's not here. So I'm still working on 50 billion other projects. What are you doing? <laughs> Shall I start? Do I have more than you? You probably do. I only have three things. All right. Well, as always, we'll blur through this simple stuff, the stuff I'm always working on. The year-long 365 granny square day project is going. It's a thing. I got lost one day and I had to make up the next day. A two-day makeup's nothing. It's just an extra square in the day. So that's not too bad. Uh, no, I have not updated Ravelry. No, I have not posted all those photos. That's, that has so not happened. We had to do extra partying this weekend. Not even just for Canada Day. Mr. No? B got a job promotion. Right. So some of my There's time got taken up this extra weekend celebrating partying. with him. So we were celebrating that. Because that was a pretty big deal. So mm-hmm. I'm very excited for him. So I have been working on that. I'm doing that uh, with the Yarn Utopia videos because she did the 365 day project to uh, raise awareness for her skill set and crocheting with um, I think it was anxiety that she has. I don't remember. I know she was battling with something, I but I don't remember was, what it was. She was having, and she was using the crocheting and the and the video tutorials to sort of help bring awareness and help help her do better, which I think is like, freaking amazing. I'm just absolutely astounded at some of the stuff people will do and how open they're willing to be. It makes me feel bad that I haven't done my YouTube videos talking about my eye loss. Mm. Gonna have to do that, because I'm <laughs> putting it off! But, no, I'm doing the, uh, the Yarn Utopia videos, and I'm using the Red Heart uh, Soft line. The Classic Soft, I believe. Ah, that's the same yarn I'm using for my shop. Yes. So, I've been enjoying that. I'm making plenty uh, a plethora. One might even go with a ginormous mound of uh, yeah. uh, violently colored uh, granny squares because I can't <laughs> do black. Navy blue is swiftly coming off the list too. So uh, there's that. We'll see what uh, creations I have at the end of the year. Actually, probably not till 2018. I'll start making stuff in 2018 and combining the squares together to see what I like and what I don't like. But <sighs> still working. I'm gonna have a lot of blankets or bags or something. There's gonna be a lot of just crocheted stuff next year, and it's gonna be like boom, crocheted stuff, and everyone's gonna be like, ah, because all year long I've been doing something like five or ten minutes of video, so it's not that long of a time investment in the morning for me. The twenty minutes that one day, because I had to do it. Because for the most part, I am now fast enough that I can crochet with her as she's doing the videos. Hmm. When I started, I had to stop the video a lot and do the round after I'd watched what she was doing and had memorized each individual round for the pattern. Now she goes, oh, and we're going to single crochet and I can just start going. So even though she catches up with me, I understand what it is she's asking for. So comprehension level wise, I'm becoming a crocheter, guys. That's awesome. Crazy talk. <laughs> so I'm enjoying that and it's getting a lot easier. And the other thing that I've been working on, which shouldn't come as a super big shawl, is my third textured triangle shawl. I will make separate projects for them on Ravelry. I've just got the one posted on Ravelry right now. It is a free pattern through Red Heart Yarns. Uh, this time around I'm doing it in a mix of Red Heart Super Soft, which was the original one I did it in, and the Loops and Threads Landscape Color Works. How do we use Lion Brand? Is it Lion? Oh, you're right, it is Lion Brand. I Lion decided Brand. the show notes for that on the weekend. You did. Uh, Lion Brand uh, in Sierra Desert. Desert Springs? Something desert. about a desert. It's a desert. This thing goes from my toes almost to my waistline. And I know you guys can't see me. I have 36 inch inseam legs. I got a lot of leg, guys. She's tall. It's a big shawl. It's, it's very tall. Large. It's a big shawl. It's starting to look like a blanket, which means it's actually going to be an extra large shawl on me, which is perfect because I make extra large shawls, but they look like regular shawls because of my height and my wingspan. Over 55 inches in wingspan. Like, that's. I have a lot of arms too. I'm not a small person. I'm five foot ten. Like I look kind of funny with small arms and small legs. So like proportionately, I'm I am structured correctly. <laughs> I'm, I am put together composite wise quite fine. This is good. It just means an extra knitting for me if I want like the great big cuddly fall shawl, which I do want. So I've had to. Uh, at this point, I think I'm close to 500 stitches, if not more, per row. Even in a worsted weight, which is what I'm doing it in, like a, like a super bulky, that's a lot of knitting. I'm almost a Gilmore Girl episode per row at this point. Like, it's I spend that's a lot a long of time row. per row. Also gives me an excuse to watch Deep Space Nine again and uh, Gilmore Girls on uh, Netflix, because I do not need to be watching those TV shows anymore to understand what's going on. I can just look up at the parts I really like and then look back down at my knitting when I'm done. 
I'm super stoked to watch Moana on Netflix tonight. Oh, I should do that. Because I didn't get to see it in theaters, and it's apparently got it. all the hit new songs that the kids are into, so I need to watch I it. I missed, I missed watching it. Well, I, maybe I'll see if Isabella's home tomorrow, my niece. Because she's home tomorrow, and I'm babysitting. She's, uh, kids are on school vacation now. Kids are on vacation. All the parents have extra stuff. Thankfully, my sister has a built-in babysitter. I work from home, so I'm able to uh, help out and pitch in and stuff. So maybe I'll see if she wants to watch it with me tomorrow. We'll have a, an aunt and niece day in, and we'll make some cake and have some chicken noodle soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. It's a freaking favorite meal. Anybody who out there who's a parent, you understand what I mean when I say they get on a meal kick, and that's the only thing they want to eat for a stretch of time. It's like six months all she wanted was bologna sandwiches. Weird. It's, it's, any of our listeners who are parents will totally understand what I'm talking about. All she wants right now is chicken noodle soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. I think it's because it's the first thing we've been able to make on our own. Mm, with just okay. mom or Annie Jocelyn watching us while we're using right. the stove and stuff, but we let her do it all on her own otherwise. We're just sort of supervising at this point for her, which is good. It's about the time when I started making food on my own. She's 10, and this is about the time when my sister did. So we get a little bit more independence. We have a little more control over what's going on. It's not cereal and milk in a bowl. Yep. So we feel like accomplished cook now because we can cook ourselves some real food. There's heat in our food. There's heat in the food. So this is good. This is the <laughs> next step. So I can understand why it's the big deal. It's the same way with the bologna sandwiches. It was shortly after we learned how to make bologna sandwiches. It was bologna sandwiches all the time. <laughs> okay, that Which makes sense. totally fair. I don't mind at all. Did you want to throw in some of your woolly workings? Because, oh, we're going to be going a while. Yeah, I, I'm also working on the texture triangle shawl. I don't think you're working on your third texture triangle shawl. No, I'm still working on my first one. <laughs> I'm doing it out of Red Heart Soft Classic in a Dark Leaf and Wheat. And I would like to point out that I am technically done the texture triangle shawl. Let's I just have more. more yarn and I want it bigger. So I'm doing it bigger. Which means I went back to section one and I'm just tacking on more shawl until I run out of yarn. <laughs> but then it went and got hot, so I super don't want to work on it because it's really warm. You know, it's hard. Mine's going to definitely live in my basement for now till the end of summer because it's, it's too warm to knit anywhere that isn't a little cooler. Warms up your lap and then the rest of you gets quite toasty. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely understand. I think that one's that one's going to rest while I work on some fingering weight stuff. Totally fair. You know, you've got till August for your stash dash goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shush. Shush you. Shush you and all your woolly workings. All of my woolly workings. I'm your gonna third textured triangle shawl. And your, you, you shush. I know. It's because I work for it. In the realm of way too much information for everybody, because of the visual impairment, I do a lot of tests. It monitors where my vision is, it monitors where my vision's going. I have a mutation on the genetic disorder, so we do a lot of record keeping. This is something I've signed on for so that they can spot it earlier, they can see where it's going, and see if any of the medications and stuff and the techniques that they have that could or potentially slow it down in regular RP or rigment and pigmentosa might work for cases that are oddball, like mine. This is great, this is wonderful. Because of my nature, and that's what I'm doing, I spend a lot of my life in waiting rooms. I spend a lot of my life waiting on the phone. I spend a lot of my life at hospitals waiting to take tests. It's a lot of tests. It's a lot of pictures of my eyeball, skins of my brain. <laughs> I have a lot of downtime. The knitting just goes with me everywhere because I'm not going to be doing anything else. Fair enough. I don't drive. I have all those times I'm waiting for the bus. I have all the time I'm on the bus. <laughs> I listen to audiobooks for the same reason. I can do both at the same time. I find I can't knit on the bus very well. Uh, what generally happens is I've got one of those faces. Everybody's fascinated with me, so I need to hear life stories every time I'm on the bus. Ah. I make friends while I'm on the bus. I don't know what yeah. you guys are doing with your time, but I generally apparently don't Apparently looking unfriendly. I guess so. <laughs> I apparently look super friendly. <laughs> if I wear my docks in a certain coat, I nobody will sit next to me on the bus, I guess, because I look like I belong in some grunge band or something. I don't know. You're looking sketchy on the bus. I apparently sometimes manage to look sketchy on the bus. I don't know, man. I don't know. I know. I, I was really confused. People would, like, look at me and then purposely sit somewhere else. I'm like, I don't think I look that sketchy, but hey, MPC. 
Well, I have four more projects. How many more do you have? Uh, two more. Well, in which case, I'll do another two. Go for it. I uh, picked up my Renya shawl, which I'm doing in a Bernay premium yarn, uh, in the black tweed and in a red in the lace section. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, R-E-N-Y-A. So I'm hoping Renya is how it's supposed to pronounce that. It's super easy. It's a garter section followed with a, ma a mesh section. She actually had enough space on the pattern. I'm assuming it's a female designer. It could be a male designer. Don't remember the name off the top of my head. We'll link it in the show notes. We'll link it in the show notes. Uh, in the bottom quarter of the pattern is a uh, row box tick off. So you can tick off each time you do a row right on the pattern itself. Ah. So like that was super nice because the clear boxes are right side, gray boxes are wrong side. So she's already, again, and apologies if it's not female, she, he, throw all the words in there. Singular they. Person. The designer, there we go. There we go. The designer has set it up so I can just count off on the bottom, which is perfect. Sounds so clever. I can put it down and walk away, come back, and I know exactly where I am right away before I even look at my knitting. So I completed a mesh garter section, which are just yarn overs and slip slip knits to get your, your lace looks. And I'm back into a, um, not mesh section, but garter section. So I'm going to rotate that till that's done, see if it's big enough. And if it's not, do a few more rotations of the pattern from the start again, because that seems normal. Yeah. Normal for me, anyway. It's the beauty of knitting. This thing isn't big enough. I'm just going to do Make more it of it. bigger. I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, another thing I've been working on is my Bendy Arrow Shawl. That's by Charlotte Bay. I discovered this pattern because of the uh, Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters, because they had done a bunch of them. I also have the Hudson Shawl on my queue for the same reason, because they have all these finished ones, and they were holding them up, and I was just like, yeah, it's too pretty not to knit. <laughs> I don't need a fingering weight shawl again. Guess what, guys? I'm doing another one. <laughs> But there's so many pretty fingering weight shawls to be made. There are so many gorgeous fingering weight shawls. My queue is over 430, 440 now. So if you manage to I currently to have 20 items in my shopping cart on Ravelry that I must purchase within the next few months because I want to start them right away. So if you had 400 items in your queue yeah. and you knit one item every week, that's eight years of knitting. Yes. Thankfully, I'm going to live longer than eight years. I hope. Well, it's also probably going to take you longer than a week to make a lot of these things. Um, yeah, I'm not a short person. A sweater is definitely going to take me longer than a week, and I've got at least 30 sweaters in my queue. My goodness. Sweaters, cardigans, love the things. Not a lot of hats or mittens, which seems weird given I live in a place with hats and mittens and scarves being as a primary requirement well, for half the Well, that's what the giant year. shawls are for. You just wrap them around your head a few times. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'm uh, enjoying the Bendy Arrow Shawl. I'm doing it in the uh, Summer Silk is my first color in a white. And then in the, oh man, Hedgehog Fiber Sock Base in the Poison colorway as my color two. So hopefully uh, we'll describe why I'm starting again uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> fiber Fibers. <laughs> so those are two more of mine. What are you working on, my dear? I've been continuing work on the Bell Rose Shawl by Martina Bame from the first package in the Strickmick 2017 club. And that is out of the club yarn Sheep en Soie in Remembering Rose. Ooh. So I have now finished the eighth of 14 medium-sized bells. And then I have, I think, two large bells and one really big bell, and then I'm done. So We're getting I'm, there. I'm over halfway. You're getting there. That's, that's no small thing. <laughs> it's just taking so freaking long. I, I can't it would probably go faster if I worked on it. I discovered, I actually timed it, it takes me about an hour to do a bell and about an hour to do the garter stitch between the bells. That's not too bad. So, I mean, a two hour movie, I can get a bell and the next garter stitch bit done. So, if I actually just worked on the thing, it would go a heck of a lot faster. Probably, yes. I, again, I can't help you with that. And I need to hurry up and finish that so I can start the second package, which I'm super excited about it, because it, it was purple yarn with, like, acid green yarn and accents, and I'm so freaking excited about the second package. <laughs> but I need the needles that the first one's on, so. You're gonna have to get it done! Yeah, I gotta. Alright, the last two things I've been working on is it's July. 
Yeah. Which means Jocelyn started Christmas knitting. Ah. Because I don't like... Okay. My favorite thing to participate in Christmas time, of all the things I do, and I mean, I go to the church socials, I do the Christmas carols, I do the fancy... I do a lot of celebrating for Christmas. I find it very enjoyable. It's a great... Most people are motivated to visit friends and family that time of year, whereas I find nobody's motivated to go out in the wintertime after that. And I love the winter time. So it's like my only opportunity to share my enjoyment of the weather with other people is to do a lot of Christmas stuff. So I do a lot of Christmas stuff. Makes sense. I'm also a huge fan of the Harvest Fall church dinners because it's amazing food. It's really good. And there's a lot of it. There There's a lot of so Ukrainian churches around here. Man, they make good pierogies. Such good food. So, I find I like to be free in November and December and not be tied to any knitting. So I participate in the Grinch Along that's held with the Knitmore Girls every year. I'm so planning on doing that this year. Because it makes Christmas far more delightful. That The only thing I have to be in charge of is baking. That's not a problem. <laughs> so it means I start my knitting in July. So I'm done by October, November. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's finished, it's wrapped, it's under my tree, which goes up after Remembrance Day on the 15th of November. And I'm riding, I'm good, I'm Mm. golden. And when people are like, let's do a last minute party, I'm always free and available for that reason. I'm thinking that uh, once Stash Dash is done, I'm just going to crank out a whole pile of socks for everybody for Christmas. Because I can do a sock in a week. Yes, can. And done. And everybody loves a pair of homemade socks. So, everybody loves socks. Christmas in July! Woo! That's Woo! what I'm doing. My first project is one of three I have to do. Technically four I have to do because I have to make a replacement for myself. <laughs> is the cat hats that I'm doing for the knit club. Now there are three primary members. Uh, Miss Steve, the Funky Fibers, Kitchen, uh, Red, and uh, Diana. So they all know what they're getting because we all decided we were going to make each other something for Christmas this year. So they all know that they're getting that hat. It's technically called the Pussy Hat Project. It's not my favorite way. I'm just going to call it the Cat Hat. That's fine. Everybody knows what you mean. Everybody knows what I mean. So I've started that. I've done the ribbing on the first one. So we're now into this straight away. It's knit flat and sewn up. It's super, super easy project. It's a remarkably cute hat for how simple it is, and you'd think it would look really stupid, but nope. it's remarkably cute. It is a really cute hat. So I was like, nope, um, because I want to adjust some of the measurements for wider brim and stuff, because I know we, I like to fold my brim up and have the ribbing on the brim and not really as part of the hat. Mm. So I'm fiddling around with the measurements on this first one, and it's going to be for me. That way, if something's a little off and I have to make a slight tweak, it's fine. We're good to go. So I've started on that, and I can usually, I can do one of those hats in about a week if it's the only thing I'm knitting. It's a quick knit. It's a quick knit. It's quite wonderful. The other thing I've been working on is the Lost Souls shawl. Oh, this is new. This is a new one. You can make me link new things in the show notes. I am. Oh, such work. By uh, Marionetta Roy. It's not a knit, it's a crochet. (gasps) Are we ready? Okay. It is a... Skull patterned shawl. I'm doing it in the Bernay Premium pink yarn. Ah, yes, the baby pink yarn. The baby pink yarn. The super girly yarn. I am making this pink. It should be roses, but the pattern I'm sort of lace crocheting in is a skull. It's so great. It's the frilliest (laughs) skull pattern in the frilliest baby pink color. It's fantastic. It brings joy to my heart. And I know the person who's receiving it's going to like it because it's my sister. And I took her the pattern and said, I want to make this for you for Christmas, but I need you to pick a color. She said, done. I will totally pick a color. That is super cool because she'll wear it as a scarf Mm -hmm. up around her neck. And I'm like, don't pick black because I can't crochet in black any more than I can knit in black not gonna happen she picked the baby pink so she's getting a baby pink skull crocheted shawl for christmas that's pretty amazing yeah yeah so i'm so excited to see this thing when it's done it's the row repeat it's not a complicated pattern it's again it's a free ravelry download like it's you guys can pick this up and get it started if you're crocheters it's not complicated you just single crochets chains double crochets half double crochets the entire thing's made out of that. There's no more complicated in it at all. 
Nice. Because it's made from the bottom up, you're always increasing till you get to your bind off. So there's no decreasing crochets. Nice. So you can also just make it as big as you want. Yup. More skulls! More skulls! <laughs> so I've gotten through three repeats of the pattern as of last night. So it, it's not going to take me long. This is a very fast crochet. So I'm really enjoying it. It also gives me a break from the only thing I crochet is granny squares. <laughs> You can put all that crochet practice into use. I can put that crochet practice into use for an actual garment this year, not next year. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> but those are all of the things I've been working on. And in case you people think I've been stuck on the phone for a while, can you tell I've had a phone call heavy week and an appointment heavy week this past week because... That's a lot of things. It's a lot of knitting, guys. <laughs> well, I have one more thing. Sure. I have been working on the Find Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mowry. So jealous. And I'm still in the first section. I got into the uh, lace bit. Uh, so the yarn that I am currently using is the rainbow sock yarn that I got on my first trip to San Francisco. Woohoo! Bought at a cute little yarn shop that I can't for the life of me remember the name of, <gasps> and I've long since lost the ball tag. Oh no! Uh, but there was a cute little yarn shop in the Mission District just a couple of blocks from Dolores Park. Wonderful! I look forward to... Uh checking that out after the show. I'd like to ogle your yarn project, please. <laughs> well, it's sitting right here next to the uh, recording device. Excellent. I will take a look at it when we're done. I do think that's it for our woolly workings? That was all my workings. I have been freed from the starting point shell, guys. Can you tell? 60 billion projects later. I, uh, I have not very much knitting because there is spinning that I'll talk about in a little bit because it's Tour de Fleece. It is Tour de Fleece. I've been doing spinning. Oh, well, that's it for woolly workings. So little time. So little time. Yeah, no, you're trapped on my foot. Okay. Obviously, I have not been sewing. So, what? Jocelyn. What have you been sewing? You mean you haven't magically become a sewer? I haven't <laughs> magically started sewing since last week, no. <laughs> uh, the production work continues, not strictly for the Etsy shop. Uh, I've been held up a little. I've got some stuff on order that hasn't shown up yet, finishing notions and stuff for some of the purses. So, I am in waiting mode. I have gotten some of the photographs done and some of the tag work correct and finished, so I am creeping ever closer to it being live. I'm going to uh, say, here's the big, bold statement. I'll get it done by next Tuesday. One of these times, I will be right. Until then, <laughs> I am... If you keep saying it, eventually it'll be true? One day it will be true. I keep trying. We'll see how we how we do. <sighs> yeah. No, I'm going to say it. Yeah. Should yeah. Everybody call me a big, fat liar next week when it's not done. But that's okay. I'm going to have it done for next week. I'm turning into one of those people that says they're going to do things and doesn't. Oh, my goodness. But it's working. It's fine. I cut out the stuff for the dress that I want to make. I did go halter with the red polka dot pattern. So I need to just put it together. But I'm waiting on some interfacing to come in. And I'm waiting on some other stuff for purses and detailing stuff. So kind of, sort of keep moving. I do a little bit of sewing every other day. So I'm using my machine. And I've got my stuff ordered for my uh, new old hot stuff. New old hot stuff? When uh, Mitchell's was closing down one of the fabric stores oh, in your the fancy city, sewing machine. I bought a old school, out of the table, portable Singer sewing machine. It needs a new drive belt. It needs new needles. And it's there straight was out of the. A, I don't even know what decade that's straight out of. It is a pretty old school. It's an old school Singer. It's certainly not newer than the seventies. No, no. So I've got the parts on order, and they're going to come in. It's I picked it up for dirt cheap. And it required like thirty dollars worth of stuff for me to fix it. So, this is not a totally problem. Worth it's it. just upgrading some of my parts. Done. Otherwise, those things are solid beasts. They uh, never break. <laughs> they never break. It's beautiful. So I'm excited to have that up and running because it'll be perfect for sewing denim and heavier materials later in the fall. So, that is my so little time. All right. Did you ever get the self-threading fixed on your other machine? Oh, no. It's super foobard. It was put together incorrectly. So, because I inherited that sewing machine, I'm just going to use it till I can't use it anymore because it will start to wear down eventually. And then I'm going to replace it with one that self-threads properly. <laughs> so then I don't have to ask my sister to come thread my sewing machine so I can continue sewing. <laughs> All right. She's fine with it. She comes because I do her mending for her, so she considers it a fair trade-off, but still. Guys, I should really have a Thread self-threading sewing machine that actually self-threads. I don't know, it seems like pretty cheap labor. Thread sewing machine, get mending done? She seems fine with the with the deal. She doesn't have a lot of mending, so it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Her kid has a lot of mending. Well, kids, kids are do. tough on their clothes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah they are. 
But yeah, no, that's it for so little time. Nothing super fancy going on. Shortly I'll have a summer dress, given the 30 plus heat. This will be exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go over the joys of just cutting patterns and pressing seams. I like sewing straight lines. Zoom! And you're done. Just vroom! Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. So I'm going to have to get an iron so I can press seams. It makes all the difference. Hmm. Alright, I'll have to get married. <laughs> Becoming an adult before my very eyes! <laughs> you, uh, have an electric eel wheel five set up there. Do we have spinning to talk about this week? We have, we have a segment, a new segment. We have a segment title for our spinning segment. It is no longer theoretical spinning, it is actual spinning. Yep, yep. Titled Spinning Yarns. It's very cute. <laughs> I take zero credit for this name. Who was uh, the fiance? Yeah. 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 Good call. It's a good name. I likes it. So, uh, I can spinning. You can spinning. I can spinning, kinda. Um, we're learning. The point of Tour de Fleece for both of us is to learn. Yeah, so we're on to day four. Yes, yes. July the 4th day. America has had its birthday today. Oh yeah, happy America day. Happy birthday, America! It's not called America day. Independence Day? Right. <laughs> July 4th is Independence well, Day. Well, we have Canada Day. Why can't they have America Day? I just like saying Happy Birthday, America. It's, it covers all my bases. Okay. Happy, <laughs> happy America Day. <laughs> anyway. So, I've lost my original train of thought. You were talking about your Evil 5 and your spinning. Yep. Tour de Fleece. Yeah. Fourth day of it. Yep. You're uh, starting yeah, to make some good yarn. That thought's gone. Um, yes, I'm getting a lot more consistent. As of today, I'm doing less of the thick, thin nonsense. Ooh. And uh, it's coming out to a nice, relatively consistent. Nice. So yeah, we're learning. I say relatively. The skills have been growing. But then when I uh, allow it to twist up and kind of ply back on itself to check how it's going, it's actually making things that resemble actual decent yarn. Uh-oh. Yeah. You might have yarn when you're finished? I might actually have yarn when I'm finished. Oh my goodness. So I need to decide if I'm going to leave it as singles or apply it together. And I'm probably going to apply it together because just for learning purposes. That would make the most sense because I don't imagine many people do stuff with the first yarn they spin. It's it's their display yarn because like that's your first. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. I mean, that's what I plan to do with mine. So it makes total sense to practice plying with it too. I'm yeah. with you. Practice yarn. So, all the uh, materials list here. Ooh, yes. I am spinning Merino Superwash Merino Top from Hillary's Magical Yarnorium, which I got at the Manitoba Fiber Festival last year. It is it dyed in the colorway Eye of Jupiter. So it's got purples blues and pinks and purples <laughs> and reds and pinks and oranges and yellows and a little bit of white all kind of swirled together and there's like chunks of color, and when it was all uh, coiled up in the bag, it actually kind of looked like Jupiter's spot. Oh, yeah. Which is pretty cool. That'd it cool. looks less like that now, because it's all unraveled, and some of it's in clumps, and I was experimenting with clumps. So now there's some, like, puffy blue clouds amongst a coil of orange and purple. No, that works. It looks pretty. Excuse me. And I am spinning it on my Electric Eel Wheel 5 which is from, I believe the e-store is called Dreaming Robots. It was a Kickstarter that I backed, and a super solid Kickstarter. They like shipped like a month after the Kickstarter ended. I was super impressed. And it's all just laser cut wood and uh, injection molded bobbin plastic bits. And yeah, like you could probably laser cut and 3D print all of these parts yourself and then you just need um, I don't know all the words the drive band I think you, you need to figure out some kind of rubbery drive band and then the electronics of course oh well, yeah the electronics is the big one because uh, their little speed controller Dewey has its own microchip which is fine no I think I would just I would just enjoy having uh electric spinning wheel. I'm enjoying watching you on yours. I'm Everybody still... is. I pulled it out because I realized on Canada Day that I hadn't, it was July 1st and I hadn't done any spinning yet. So it's like, 
midnight and we're all hanging out, drinking, playing video games. I'm like, oh no, I haven't done my spinning yet. So I pull it out and start spinning. And everybody just kind of stops and looks. I'm like, I'm sorry, should I put it away? No, 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 keep going. I just want to watch. Oh, jeez. Okay, so everybody's like watching me spin. Like, okay. That's this is kind of weird, not but sure. Creepy. It's kind of creepy. So apparently <laughs> people like watching me spin? I guess. It's like one of those super satisfying videos that goes around the internet where it's just that repetitive perfect pattern stuff that like machinery does okay and so it's just really soothing and satisfying to watch this pretty soft colorful fiber turn into pretty soft colorful yarn and it there's something just really it it pushes a button that is it pushes a dopamine button it's for you exactly what you need i uh, i might rapidly become a spinner you might rapidly become a spinner? I might rapidly become a spinner. Okay, that's totally fair. I need to continue with what I'm doing, which is working on learning to spin. So I'm starting from an even more from scratch mode than you are. I'm definitely going drop spindle or a hand spinning. I don't think I'm quite ready for something as fast as an electric spinning wheel or even a treadle spinning wheel. Spinning wheel. And this one can go really slow. So. It definitely gives some options, like that goes slow enough that if I get comfortable with it, I, I feel like I could do an, an electric spinning wheel. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, I've been watching uh, video tutorials and reading about the jargon and terminology. Uh, this next week, I'm going to attempt to uh, start actually spinning spinning. That's exciting. Oh, I know. So shortly, I might also be in the spinning category with you. Woo! Ta-da! The only other sort of quick little short thing we have is yarn on the go. Do we have any go? I have some go. Oh, I don't think I said that we had go. I have a little bit of yarn by the go. And by like a little bit, I mean I took a girlfriend out for lunch on Friday and my knitting went with me. We went to bodegas down in the exchange and I knitted and ate, uh, ate my chicken pickles and fries and had an afternoon and then came to the coffee shop here in the village that I like to go to, the second cup on River and Osborne, and uh, did a lot of knitting while waiting for you to get off work so we could hang out for a bit after work. Yep. So it was the thing. It wasn't a lot of on the go, but there was some on the going for my yarn. I was working on my Bendiero shawl. My yarn went nowhere this week. My yarn travels with me. I get out. I do things. I'm not nearly as much of a homebody as some people think. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's all I've got. So that really just leaves us with... Uh, fiber flubs? Yeah. Fiber flubs? <laughs> you want to tell me about your flubs? No. <laughs> Can I pretend they don't exist? Is this an option? Uh, well, I mean, you're doing the audio editing, so if you just cut this part out, then they didn't happen. Ugh, but they happened. So we went to Bell MTS to fix people issues and phone problems. And we were there for like an hour and a half. Yeah, that was a solid hour and a half. It was a solid hour and a half. We were there on the mall the other day. So here I am working on my bendy arrow shawl and working away and working away. And I was at the point where I was repeating some rows to get it up to size to change color. Missed not one, not two, but three yarn overs on three separate increase rows. Didn't even notice. Ooh. Fine. So you'd think I'd just tink back. Except I did that magical making a hole randomly in the garter section for no particular reason. Way back at the beginning of the shawl. And I cannot rescue a row to save my soul. I can't, I can't do it. So I'm sitting here at MTS. I have a good three and a half, four inches of this fingering weight shawl knit. Mm-hmm. I had to rip it back to the start. Oh. Because that's my only option. In a finger weight shawl, I cannot see the yarn. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's this tiny little notebook. And I'm literally just at the point where I'm getting ready to do pattern repeats again. So it's like maybe the length of my finger. My index finger. Maybe. Pinky. At least the yarn is nice and you get to knit with it again. Oh my gosh. You guys. <laughs> Mr. Bean, his mom looked over, so we're waiting for answers and stuff, and they're like, well, you're going the wrong way! <laughs> it's like ripping the yarn out at MTS. <laughs> I must have caused people some grief. I was like, ugh. No, too many mistakes. If there's one small imperfection here or there, I will leave it. It doesn't bother me that much. I know that missing those increased rows would mess me up later on, and it would offset and make everything look wrong. So I was like, nope. <sighs> I'm not okay with that. I've this Sad. is too nice of a yarn to just fudge it. 
needs to be done right. So, yeah. Starting to bend the arrow again. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's four times now, because I tried it, started, started three times in the dark color. Right. And we had to opt out of that to uh, the not deep dark color. Right. Oh, uh, you guys. I have to cast all the Find Your Fade at the beginning of August. I only have, like, three weeks to finish the shawl. <laughs> I have got to get going. I do not have time to do this. I believe in you. Uh, I might have fewer projects next week. <laughs> might be Bendero all the way. But you'll have so much progress. I'm hoping so. And I don't have the same problem I have with the starting point shawl. God, I got a phone and see if maybe by some miracle my yarn has been ordered. I really need that yarn. <laughs> but that's my only fiber flub. That is sufficient. That's plenty of flub. That is enough. Sitting out in public and realized the last five hours worth of work you've put into this thing is out the window. When you just have a moment of, aw, oh, man. Yeah. <sighs> Alright. Hey, I didn't hesitate. I did it right then and there. I didn't wait. I didn't try to see if it was, I was just like, nope, this is wrong. <sighs> Sorry. Yawning. Brain needed oxygen. And I need to... Just let it go and start again so that it looks right. Urgh. Sigh. Hey, you don't have any fiber flubs. Don't uh, take that with a grain of salt, man. Yeah. It could have been worse. I've been doing too much spinning to flub any knitting. Oh, oh, you can flub spinning. I can flub spinning. <laughs> I mean, I've broken my yarn a number of times, but I don't count that as flubbing. I count that as learning at this point. No, I think it'll get to the point where we're twisting and plying, and we twist the same way instead of opposite directions. That's where yeah, we get to go. Yeah, plying, I'm sure we'll have some flubbing going that, on. That's going to be a thing. But no, that's it for fiber flubs. It's thankfully short and sweet this week. Oof. <laughs> thankfully. Uh, do you want to do a break here? Nah, we can just hop into events. Okay, uh, I'm no, going to pull we... it up on my here because I got tired of writing it down each week. So That's fine. I just we don't that. really need to go into super deep, big detail on most of them. So that works. La, 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 la. We have enough now that people can listen to back ones if they don't know and catch everything. It's really weird. I was evidently pinching a tendon. I'm like, why is my thumb curling up? It's because I was pinching a tendon. Well, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. La 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 la. Okay, I've got the events check, 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 section, just section. Section? Yeah. <laughs> just section. <laughs> oh goodness. Words, words, things, stuff, oh. sentence structure. I'm so excited to Diction. read this National Geographic on history. Ah, so pumped. All right. I really want to see something on the Instagram with that in your knitting later. I will totally do that. Okay. We've got some events. Are you sure? Positive? We're at the event section? I'm absolutely positive. Excellent. For things that are going on right now, Stash Dash started back in May. It did. So this is where you're trying to knit through your stash, and one generally has a uh, meterage goal for using up your yarn. Uh, I do not have a meterage goal. I simply want to finish everything on my needles, minus the wedding shawl. Which makes sense. Because myriad reasons... The wedding shawl doesn't count. Everything else does. And you weren't sure what distance goal you were going for. I'm either going for a 5 or a 7k. If I manage to do one fingering weight shawl each month this summer, that puts me at a lot of meterage really quickly. Yes, it does. And I have a sweater knit along. The yarn is ordered that I'm participating in. And I have Christmas projects on the go. And I have some other projects I'm wrapping up. So I could conceivably go for 7K. I've given myself to the middle of July to really make that call. Um, Sounds And reasonable. I'm going to leave myself there. But I'm either 5 or 7K. I've got enough time. I'm doing enough knitting that... Given that I have finished a pair of socks... That might be a little excessive just, for you. I'm, I'm not. It's not happening. It's not happening. So it's it's fine. It's not a problem. But again, it's a competition against yourself. I just yeah. want to see how far I can go in a summer. Yes. Other ongoing things. Tour de Fleece started on the first. It did. I've been spinning every day. I have not. <laughs> I'm so far doing the thing that I said I would do. 
The goal was for me to learn how to spin, so I've been doing my researching stuff. So I'm still going to consider this a win so far, mostly because I've been watching my tutorial videos, and I've been reading about the terminology, and I've been doing all of that good studious studenty stuff. That sounds entirely reasonable. I have fiber, so we're, we're getting there. So, so long as I am spinning by the end of Tour de Fleece, it's a win for me. So this goes from July 1st until 23rd, uh, in conjunction with the Tour de France, and I think there's rest days on the Mondays that are not yesterday. Yes. Yeah. So that's perfect, because that gives the day before we record is our day to get our show notes and stuff done. So yep. it's a good rest day. Yep. It's nice, short, and sweet to the point. All right. Other things... How about some knit-alongs? <gasps> you mean all of the stuff I participate way too much in? Like, yes, yeah, let's you talk have, about uh, those. You have some stuff with the grocery girls. They're Canada Cal and their Sweet Summer Cow. Yes, the Sweet Summer Cow is actually done in conjunction with Craftsy. Uh, it is a, kid you not, sweater. <laughs> it's the Zadie Summer Sweater Knit-Along. The yarn is ordered. It's on its way. I should have it by the end of this week. It is a worsted weight sweater. The girls did their first update on their show Off the Needles through Craftsy, where they were working on the body. I do not think it'll take me long to catch up with them, even with the extra rows I'm going to have to add in for the length. So I'm going to double check my math over the next day or so, because I've got the pattern and it's printed out. So that's good to go. I'm going to double check my numbers so when the yarn gets in, I can immediately wind my ball and get going. Sounds like a plan. Mm-hmm. Yay. And what's so the deal many. with this uh, Canada cow? To celebrate Canada's 150th birthday, the grocery girls are doing a Canadian make-along. A make-along? Oh, okay. Make -along. I'll have to change the show notes. Crochet it, sew it, knit it, create it out of fiber, should you so desire. If you're creating something with a Canadian name, you get an entry. With a Canadian designer, you get an entry. With Canadian yarn, you get an entry. You can get three entries out of one project, should you desire. Well, I've got a couple of projects from the Cozy Up Designs, which is the Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters designer runs. Since they're in Grand Prairie, Alberta, they're definitely Canadian designers. And I want to do their Alberta Frost Mints, which has a Canadian name. So, so long as I pick Canadian yarn, one of my projects will be three out of three entries. Nice. Not a bit. They also put out a Canada Day Toque, which I picked up the pattern while it was free because it was cute. I am actually probably going to do another loops and thread yarn that they did it out of because I really like that oatmeal red combo. Hmm. Yeah, I it looked may good. even do the pom pom on the top. I mean, it's not a proper Canadian toque without a stupid pom pom. I really don't like pom poms, but I feel for the aesthetic purposes of a proper Canadian hat, it needs to have the pom pom. It needs the pom pom. So I'm going to do that, which will be fine. And then I've got some yarn that I want to buy that's Canadian based for the Find Your Fade shawl, which ties in with the Wolseley Wool. Faded Summer Knit Along. Which we are both doing. Yes, which I'm actually participating in. Because I was going to knit it anyway, so it's true. this well, just gave I. me an excuse to do it sooner. You just Now we get to and participate in a knit along at the same time, which is like the best part. In my mind, anyway. So for the Woolsley Wool is our local yarn shop, the localist of the two local yarn shops. It is the closest of the two yarn shops for us, yes. <laughs> uh, and so for that one, you can do the Find Your Fade, Free Your Fade, so faded, which is a sweater, or the so faded pint sized, which is the smaller kids version of the yeah, kids sweater. sweater. I might actually do the kids sweater or the so faded sweater for my niece because she is an extra small human now. Mm -hmm. That could be quite fun. So there's that as an option. But for now, find your fade shawl. I have not picked up any more yarn yet. I have not been back to uh, Wolseley Wool. I'm gonna check on the order for my cotton yarn, see where they are with that, and then go down and do some picking up of yarn, possibly this week or next week. All right. Uh, and then in other fibery things, the Manitoba Fiber Festival is coming up in September. Oh my goodness, that's just creeping up really fast. <clears throat> September 15th and 16th. Oh my gosh. We're going to go and buy all the fibers. We are going to go buy all the fibers. And pet all the fibers, and cuddle yes. all the fibers, and fond all the fibers. Yes, all of this is buckets of yes to me. Rub our faces in the fibers? Well, maybe not while it's still mm, on the animal. No, I think I'm going to avoid the face rubbing part. Mm, I might not. That might not be good for my allergies. I think I'm going to go no with that one. But yes to the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that happens out at the um, exhibition grounds? Yes, the Red River Exhibition Grounds. Well, that's exciting. Which is not the Cinnaboy Downs, it's the building next to that. That's okay. I think it'll be good. It'll be so much fun! Yeah! Because fiber. 
All these well, fiber. We're going to have an acquisition the week after, like nobody's business. <laughs> oh, guys. It might need its own episode. Uh, lots of photos on Instagram, I suspect. Oh, yes. For the uh, purposes of showing people all of the pretty yarn. It's a thing. Uh, non fibery things coming up that are nerdy things that we do because we are nerds. This is true if we are. Icon is coming up July 21st to 23rd, which is the local anime convention. Super soon! Which, of course, our knitting will come to. Well, yeah. Well, it's like, hello, I take my knitting to my girlfriend's birthday lunches. My knitting goes everywhere, guys. There will be knitting. <laughs> knitting will be had. It'll happen. There'll With be any luck, somebody Instagram will crochet shots. a costume of some sort. Somebody will have done something, anyway. So. At the very least, there will be... I, I will make this bold claim. There okay. will be at least one crocheted Pokemon item. Okay. It's entirely possible that that is the case, yes. I, I figure it's a place for crocheted Pokemon items. We will definitely have the opportunity to uh, check it out, because there's the artist alley in the vending room, vendor's room. Yep. So it's entirely possible that is the case, yes. I'm pretty pumped for this. I'm excited, because you've never been. I've gone on and off for the years, and I really enjoy the community and everything, so I'm Turns out that several of my other friends are going as well, so... Woohoo! can run into people all day. Uh, that was going to happen. You were taking me to a convention. We run into people I know when we go to the grocery store. That's true. So this will not be shocking if we run into people I know when we're at... It'll be shocking to run into people I know. Yes. Yeah, that'll <laughs> be different, that's for sure. So, that's okay. Uh, that Sunday, on the 23rd, I get on an airplane to go to Vegas. <laughs> I go home. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas for B-Sides and DEF CON, which are cybersecurity conferences. Oof. However, I am rooming with a knitter, which is why this is related. So... In my mind, it's all related. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I'm hoping for perhaps a bit of audio interview to splice into an episode at some point. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last thing is Central Canada Comic Con, uh, which is October 27th to 29th. <laughs> because Comic Con! Which, again, is not specifically about knitting. There will most certainly be crocheted Pokemon items, and our knitting will come with us. Well, yeah. I don't know how the knitting would not come with us. I don't know. I don't Madness. Know. It'd be crazy if we didn't take it. Oh, it's going to be a busy weekend in October because it's just before Halloween, which is like the biggest holiday for my family. Oh my goodness. Well, they do it that weekend specifically so that everybody will dress up and not feel weird about it. Oh, well. I've heard that we're actually the best costumed con in North America because of that. Works I, for me. I don't know if that's true. I'll say it is even if it isn't. That's fine. Anyway. Sounds true. It sounds true, therefore sounds it true. is. I wonder if the Klingon couple will be there. The Klingon couple? There's a couple that goes every couple of years and they fully Klingon, like, he's a Klingon, she's a Klingon, the baby's dressed as a Klingon. Oh, that's amazing. It's all Klingon all the way. That's, I love it. That's perfect. It's so good. So we'll see. But I think that's it for the moment for us for stuff that, that, is, that we're doing. That is events. Huh. Shall we do our book review? Let's do our book review. Book review! This week for our book review, we are reviewing 25 Knitted Accessories to Wear and Share. For, uh, it is a collection from Interweave. And this is a book that we bought from the bargain book section at the uh, bookstore. It's true, because the bargain book section at the bookstore is just as good as the regular book section. It's a fantastic section. I got a whole book for a dollar. It's true, you did. Not, Not this, this one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Different book. Yeah, I saw a lot of cookbooks for ten bucks and... Man, I have this cookbook buying obsession. Mm. I get a lot of really good recipes out of cookbooks. Oh, I should say that this book retails for twenty two ninety nine in the U.S. and twenty five fifty in Canada, unless you get in the bargain book section. In which case, you might pay less. Was it seven dollars? We paid seven dollars. And by we, I mean you, because it's yours. True. <coughs> Terrible. So. Do you want to do overall thoughts or dive into patterns? Eh, let's do overall thoughts and then dive into patterns. Something different. Oh, Change okay. What are your overall thoughts? Not bad as far as a collection book goes. Mm -hmm. We've got a nice balance between different bits and pieces. Uh, it's, a, it's a collection. It's laid out like a collection. This all makes sense to me. I would have loved for the photos to have been better. That was one of my comments as well. They seemed A lot of them seemed pretty lifestyle-y. Yeah. 
Um, the yarn choices they picked for some of them were really dark, dark photo, dark space. So picking up on details became a bit of a problem. And by a bit, I mean I couldn't do it under a magnifying glass, so that seems like too much of a problem for me. Mm. It's fine if it's decently shot, because under a magnifying glass I can still get the details, but too many of the uh, lifestyle photos and not enough knitwear photos doesn't really tell me what it is that I'm looking at. Yeah. Or how to look if I change the yarn, so not a super big fan of that. What else did I write down? I think the uh, photo thing was my biggest con, but I mean... The charts and instructions were fine. Yeah, everything else is good. And, and other than my, my obvious desire for everything to be a size 50 billion font, uh, no, it's just the photos that could really turn you off a project. Easily, I could see. Because you just, you can't see what it is that they're trying to show you. Fair enough. But no, otherwise I enjoyed the book. I it was really good for a collection. Shall we dive into patterns that we liked? Absolutely. Would you like to start? Sure. Uh, I have a weakness for fingerless gloves. <laughs> so I liked all of the fingerless gloves. Okay. The first of which being the Teak Bittersweet Gauntlets. Oh, I did those have, ones. I did have a minor complaint about them. Okay. Which is, I didn't notice that they actually had color work on them. <laughs> Until I was reading what yarn they used, and I'm like, wait, there's a second color in there? And I had to really look for it, because it's not a very high contrast color change. And so I thought it was just some texture, and that was how the photograph was. But no, it's a whole other color in there. So... I would do it in a higher contrast. So that the color work stands out? Yeah, so you can, you know, actually see the color work. But otherwise, I quite like them. Apologize, I'm trying to knit through the back loop, guys. Oh, it's concentration face over there. Uh, I hate knitting through the back loop. I can do it. But my goodness, it is not a super enjoyable stitch for me. Knit through the back loop? Sure. Purl through the back loop? If I gotta. Knit two together through the back loop? <sighs> if it didn't make such a freaking pretty edge detail, I would not do it, you guys. I would not do it. <laughs> Wouldn't happen. Um... I'm not... The gauntlet fingerless gloves were fine. Uh, the first thing I hearted in the pattern book was the Echo Reversible. Echo Reversible. It is a Mobius wrap. That is this one. Mm-hmm. Oh, with the drop stitches in the cables. With the drop stitches in the cables. Even in the dark color that they picked for the fabric, it's a very clearly done photo, so you, can, you get a very clear idea of what the knitwear should do. Mm-hmm. As far as the pattern goes, that's a beautiful... Eternity scarf, infinity scarf. Yep. It'll look good either way you style it with the the details added in, in the Mobius again with the drop stitches and the cabling and all the other bits and have it in. You could do it in a tweed. You could do it in a, a super bulky. You could do it in the worsted weight. You could do it. Wouldn't do any finer, but yeah, something with some nice tooth would be really good. Yep. Yeah. Something yeah. with an interesting texture as well. Yeah, Those absolutely. Drop stitches would show that off, as they, they have done here. They certainly would, absolutely. And, again, I'm at the point where I understand that we're at plus 30. <laughs> Winter's going to be here before I know it. I'm going to want new scarves this year. Oh, yeah. So that was the first one I liked. Let's see, flipping through. My next one that I liked was the shoddy mitts. Well, the next one I liked was the op- opera house mitts. I also like the Opera House mitts. Well, let's talk about the other mitts first, the shaddy mitts first. Shoddy mitts? The shoddy? Shoddy? I don't know. S-H-A-A-D-I. Maybe the second A silent? Shaddy? I'm gonna... I don't know. It's, it's East Indian. Anyway, it's supposed to uh, invoke images of henna tattoos. Okay. I may also be a sucker for the color purple. <laughs> now is not the point where you want me to go, maybe? <laughs> Fingerless gloves done in purple and there's color work. Done. Sign me up. Done. And Sold. did you s- the palms of these things are gorgeous. The, the palms are quite beautiful. More intricate than I prefer my uh, fingerless gloves to be, but I am boring in my desire for simple patterns in that They're so pretty. I mean, having said that in reverse, like all the cables and nothing but the cables, I'm a massive cable fan and you're the other way around for that one, so. I killed my liking of cables. I love how they look. I just yeah. don't want to knit another cable as long as I live. Uh, then Opera House Mitts mm-hmm. was the next thing. 
It's true. Where are those at? La la la. Anyway, these are... There they are. I like the texture on these. I feel like these are... Yeah. Perhaps the best designed of the fingerless gloves in the book? Um, they're, I think, the only fingerless mitts in the book that I liked. So that says something right there. They're very simple and clean and well-fitted and interesting details. I liked the length. The length as well, yes. I liked the length, um, mostly because anybody who uh, wears heavy-duty winter coats knows there's that gap between some mitts and your coat and the wrist. Yeah. And those gloves would definitely bridge that gap quite nicely without adding a lot of bulk. Do them in a nice fine wool, like, like um, alpaca, that keeps that heat in really well. That would be lovely. Yeah, and you just have them as an underlayer. This is how cold. I walked for more than two hours outside in minus 30 degree weather. This is a thing called layers. I use them. I utilize them. It's a thing I do. And my brain just went, yes. The pattern I'm just reading is actually designed with uh, a yak bamboo blend. That would also be pretty. Yak is holy freaking warm. Yeah, yeah, that would work just fine. Or some of the um, puma yarns that we were yarn tasting. Mm. a couple of months ago. Yes. Those would also work really well for that too. So I definitely have some options that way. And because they're not a big bulky knit, they would certainly fit between my sweater and my coat and my mittens and stuff. So yep. my brain went, yes, they would also look really good on their own. Oh so yes, absolutely. Done. More than one purpose. Yeah. I'd like to knit those. Having said earlier while we were having dinner, <laughs> Uh, you know, I only have 438 things in my queue on Ravelry. Eight years worth of knitting if you knit at breakneck speed? I do not knit at breakneck speed. I mean, I'm pretty quick and I'm getting quicker. But I'm not that quick. <laughs> I don't have that many skills yet, guys. Uh, the next ones I liked was, strangely enough, are you ready for this? The Jasmine headscarf. <gasps> Jasmine headscarf. I yep. believe that is closer. Yep, right here. I thought it was pretty, but I really don't do headscarves. They just look kind of funny on me. They didn't leap out at me, at me as a thing that I would like to have. Uh, it's a, a leaf lettuce pattern, which is on another item that I want to knit. So we all know I like the pattern. Yep. It's shown up quite regularly for me. <sighs> Super long story, because it's Jocelyn shared too much information episode. Two years ago, almost two years, it'll be two years in October, I dyed my hair electric blue. And I mean, I'm talking electric blue. If you follow my personal Instagram, you can find one photo of my hair electric blue without me in costume, and one photo blue. of me in costume with my electric blue hair. Like, which, like my cartoon hair was, character blue. It was, it was blue. Uh, my hair was halfway down my back at that point. I was maybe two or three inches from my waistband. So like, it was a lot of hair. And it was a lot of bleach, and I did a lot of death to my hair. So when I knew I had to dye it for Christmas so it would be normal colored or commit to the blue and just have blue hair for a while. I couldn't commit to the blue. Uh, Mr. B was not adjusting well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a shock in the morning when I would look in the mirror because I would look in the mirror and I had a moment of like, what am I looking at? <laughs> I do not understand what's going on. It is way too early. I've not had enough coffee for this, guys. So I dyed it. I, I totally dyed it back to my natural color or relatively close. On my own, I'm, a, I'm in that light brunette range, which fried my hair even more. I lived with it at that length, pretty fried, till sometime early spring, just before, just after my birthday, just before my birthday, and then I chopped it. I have not had hair shorter than my shoulder blades since I was 10, and I am in my 30s. I'm almost halfway through my 30s, and I chopped it so short you couldn't put it up in a half ponytail. It was a true short haircut from the short haircuts in the books you find at your hairstylist. That's short? It was short. And I've been growing it out, and then I went and I helped a girlfriend get her hairdressing license, so then I got cut short into a bob again, and I've been growing it out. So now I'm at the point where it's just long enough to pull up in a ponytail, so long as it's mid-range and I got a hair clip to help me with the baby hairs. But that makes it perfect range for headwear, like a headscarf, which would let me have a low small bun and a headscarf to keep the baby hairs out of my face. Ah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and that's a nice quick knit, like that's a weekend knit for me. 
Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's something I can whip up. I can have it for the summer, do it in a cotton yarn, and then just bing, bang, boom, or like a superwash merino, something that isn't going to hold a lot of heat in. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, look at that. I've got a way to keep my hair off my face while I continue to grow it out. And it's pretty headwear. It is. I feel like you can rock the headscarf. I am capable of wearing a headscarf. I look really good in uh, headbands, too. I don't, so... My head's a little too round for the ones that go all the way around your head. Just keep falling off the back of my head. (laughs) But the headbands that just go across... Oh, yeah, no, I can wear those for days. That's not a problem. I've been doing that since I was little. Makes me look a little young. That's fine. Meh. I'm not worried about that. So well, I'm gonna be rocking some pigtails to icons, so why not? So yeah, no, the jasmine headscarf is on my it's on my short list for things to knit this summer because it'll be a quick project to whip up and then yeah. it's very, very versatile and usable for me until my hair is finished growing next summer. And even after that I can just use it as a headband next summer, so it's a thing. Uh, I only have what, three other things? Four other things that I've I've liked. I have two more things and my next thing happens to be the next pattern. Oh, what's the next pattern? The Macintosh boot socks. Oh, you and me both? <laughs> boot there's, socks! There's socks for boots and there's cables and uh, they're so cozy looking. I want to be wearing them right now even though it's 30 degrees. Are you nuts? Not I right have now. perpetually it's cold feet. Way too hot for socks. I have perpetually cold feet. Oh, I have flip flops all the way till the snow flies. Oh, it's too hot for socks, guys. But once that winter hits, again, walking outside fall, winter knee-high socks mm, yeah yep yep in a good sock yarn yeah. oh, so happening it's not a complicated cable pattern so you could even have something that's got a little bit of variegation in it Excuse me. or at the very least it won't be a super complicated cable pattern once it goes around to my calf <laughs> too bad the charts only yeah the charts not that bad yeah so you could have a you could have a color colorway that had a bit of variegation or tonal to it it wouldn't have to be a you could do a kettle dye easily oh for sure yeah that'd be lovely mm-hmm. so i'm glad we both liked at least one thing at the same well no two because we both liked mm-hmm. the opera house mats um the next thing i liked was the madeleine shawl okay let's that's in fact the next thing I'm on I thought, a roll. About, thought about that one, but I don't know. Something about Pico edges just don't do it for me. See, I'm, I'm all about the edge detailing, apparently. And that looked incredibly squishy. It does look very squishy. I bet so it I'm feels very like nice. So I'm thinking like a silk blend. It is, in fact, done in an alpaca silk uh, camel cashmere blend. Oh, yeah, I would. For this photo. Oh, hands down. I would do a 70, 10, 20. I do 70% something, 10% something, 20% cashmere. It'd be lovely. Or Very even squishy. like a, a 70 10, 10 or an 80 10, 10 blend too, without even blinking. But yeah, no, that would just be a beautiful, squishy, 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 squishy. Vel- delicate feminine shawl. My brain was like, oh, add that to the list of all the other shawls you want to make. Uh huh. I think I have at least three years worth of shawls if I did a shawl a week. <laughs> at least. At least. Guys, I'm going to have a lot of shawls. They're so versatile. They're scarfs. They keep me warm. I can give them to friends when I'm warm and they're not warm enough. They're headwear for Diana when they're finished. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're headwear for Diana in the winter. Uh-huh. I absolutely rock the scarf hijab in the winter. You totally do. Um, <laughs> they're For me, they're great travel projects at the fingering weight because even when they start to get big, they're still not... They're not that big. They're not that big. So it's... I don't know. I'm... And I know they're going to fit. I don't have to do a ton of math to make sure the dimensions are correct for my body size. Or look at a pattern and know that I can't because it stops at 40 inches in the bust line. Mm -hmm. And I'm an extra 12 inches on top of that. So there's just something really nice about a shawl for me. So there's another one on my, yeah, you know, I think I would like to make that at some point list. I only have one, no, two more things? Two more things. I have one more thing and I think it's pretty near the end. Oh, well, I chose the Grenade Army, Grand Army Plaza shawl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's a song. Hang on. Let's find the thing. This thing. Yep, that thing. Ah, yes, this lacy thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. in a hand-painted or speckled yarn. Yeah, that would be lovely. Wouldn't it, though? 
or one of those ones where it's like the fire starter one from uh, died for you E W E. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have that uh, matchstick one. Yes. Yeah. Where with... it's like dark with the rainbow bit on, on the, the one stripe. end, so it looks yeah. like a match that yeah. has been struck. Yeah. Yeah, that would look great because then you get those pops of red in there. Ah, it looks so good. I've already gone over why I love shawls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very pretty shawl. It's very lacy, but I think overall pretty simple. I don't think this even has a chart. It does not have a chart. Nope. It's simple. It's that simple. It is a non-charted lace shawl. I think it's primarily just done with uh, larger needles to get a lacy effect. Yep. Because the lace itself is quite simple. Yep. Well, look at that. Yep. It is going to be a wonderful TV knitting thing. Which I think is perfect. Or movie knitting thing. Ooh, you can do some Roman stripes, some Madeira mesh. Mm-hmm. Or some double faggoting. I don't even know what that is. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I liked was an a scarf. Uh, something about a scarf. Yes. An a scarf. Oh, this one. Yeah. That is also lovely. Isn't it a pretty scarf? And again, while I'm sitting here working on my summer shawls. Looking I'm, at winter ones? I'm looking at the, my winter stuff and stuff I'm going to want to have for fall and winter time. More me knitting. I mean, I obviously could knit these things as presents, but... For the most part, I knit for myself, and I don't knit a lot in the way of presents during the year, so. That's Because I'm also an excellent shopper. I am not. <laughs> I'm also not an excellent gift knitter. <laughs> we'll see if that sock uh, for Christmas thing happens for everybody. Theoretically could happen. Uh-huh. It could. Oh, allergies. I'm sorry, guys. You haven't quite given up the ghost yet for the year. Anyway, uh, the last thing that I was into that kind of surprised me was the Marta? Merta? There's an umlaut over the A. Oh, I don't know. It's Swedish. Umlauts give me problems. It's either Marta or Merta. Okay. Uh, it's an embroidered bag, so it's fair isle, but with extra um, embroidered embellishments, and then felted slightly. And then you sew it all up with some lining and you make a cute little bag out of it. And it, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just tickling some kind of like vintage bag thing that I like. It is definitely one of those, you'd see it in a 1940s, 1930s that's fashion what I was, magazine knitwear bag. Absolutely. That's what I was thinking. Oh my goodness, would it ever be that? Yeah, so it just kind of, it, it kind of tickled my sense of vintageness. Absolutely. So, that nope. one kind of surprised me. I didn't think I would like it that much. I thought you might like that one. Anyway, that's my last thing that I liked. We already went over my last thing. So, I mean, I definitely say, if you happen to be in your local chapters or Indigo Bookstore, <laughs> check out the bargain book section, because we found a nice book. Yeah. I'm really glad that we got. So we now have 25 patterns for the price of one, maybe two. Yep. So, sweet deal. Yep. I'll take it. So long as we're paying Canadian prices for that pattern and not euros. <laughs> <laughs> I like way too many European designers, guys. Nine bucks Canadian a pattern. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, my exchange rate. Not so great. Yeah. Gotta buy patterns from Eastern Europe. Hey, I like what I like. <laughs> and I will pay for it. I don't buy it in the slightest. Eastern Europe. Well, I can't like it. It's from the wrong half of Europe. Um, no. <laughs> saying if it's from Eastern Europe, it'll be a bit cheaper. Eh, whatever. I don't have hobbies that are cheap. I Besides, don't even Eastern Europe is it. where all the crazy good lace comes from. Like, Russian lace patterns? Oh my god. Because you look at me and you think lace knit, lace knitter. I, okay. I love lace knitting. I love lace knitting when you see it in lace weight. Okay. I, I can barely see fingering. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna love it from here to next Tuesday. That doesn't mean I'm gonna be able to make it. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm getting better with fingering weight, so maybe we can start attempting lace weight, but a lot of that's going to be, I'd have to do stuff I've knitted before so I know what the stitches are supposed to look like mm -hmm. or feel like, because a lot of what I do is by feel, So, because I'd still be able to feel it at the lace weight. That would be a very delicate touch for it, so. Yep. All right. So that's it. That's everything for the week. Whew. I went by a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I'll take it. 
Diana, my dear, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? You can find us on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest as Northern Knits Podcast. Our blog with all our show notes is at northernknitspodcast.com. You can also email us at northernknitspodcast at gmail.com. Jocelyn, where can you be found on the internet? I can be found on the internet as Amber Dragon. It's pretty easy to locate us as we're on Ravelry. You can find me there. Uh, once you see my face once, you'll be able to find my face all over the place. All right. I can be found on Instagram and Twitch as Firewater and Fiber. Fiber spelled F-I-B-E-R. And I'm on Ravelry as Wool Hyphen Rat. I theoretically stream Virtual Knit Night on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Central. She's left me hanging, guys. At twitch.tv slash Firewater and Fiber. Sit at home Wednesday night. It does Sorry. <laughs> I do try, and then things come up, and then it doesn't happen. Oh, I like to bug you. But theoretically, it's going to happen. Okay. For reals. For reals? For realsies. All right. Okay. We'll see. I'll have my computer ready to go. Okay. (laughs) Well, that's tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Yeah. Today's Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, unless I'm dying, (laughs) I'm streaming tomorrow. All right. Well, then we'll see people on the stream. If you guys have a chance, we would love it if you were able to drop us a review on iTunes or Google Play uh, or the RRS feed, however did you choose to get the podcast. Share us with your friends. We'd love to build the community some more and, and get some ideas as to what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. Always. Mm-hmm. We would love some feedback of any kind. Commentary, super appreciated. Otherwise, we hope you guys have a great week. And until next time, I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Diana. Saying no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit. I almost forgot to say it. Boosh. <laughs> the only part you don't have written down because you know it. You almost forgot to say it. I almost forgot to say it. It's a good thing I took a breath before I said it. It really is. Because I almost missed it. Oh, man. Do you have that moment in the back of your head where you're like, wait, you have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I should go let the poor boys. I don't have to hang out I'm in the back room anymore. And oh my god, turn the air conditioning unit on. I'm dying. It's so warm. <laughs>